Second book is Heart Led Leader. Yeah. What is a heart led leader? Someone that wakes up every day and puts others before themselves. Someone that's truly a servant leader. Someone that truly um, is putting others before me, before themselves, which is a really hard thing to do. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting. If you think you're a heart led leader, you're probably not. Mm. And when I wrote the heart led leader, I had a list of like a hundred amazing leaders, like in the world, like the Frank DeAngelis and the Sheryls and like all the people you read about these amazing heart led leaders, Jody Rowland, and, you know, just Jimmy Blanchard, like these amazing leaders that I know. And I called them all, said, I want to write about you. By golly, Matthew, it was like all 100 people all over the world that don't know each other. It was almost like they had a conference call before and said, when Spalding calls you, let's all tell him the same answer. You know what they all said? I, want, I said, I want to write about you. You're the greatest heart-led leader. Like you're a servant leader. I want to write your story. And they all declined. Mm. And they said the same thing. You should have heard how I spoke to my wife this morning. You sure heard how I kicked one of my employees out of the office the other day. You got the wrong guy. Yep. You got the wrong gal. I got a long way to go. So what I realized, the greatest heart-led leaders that I know, if you think that you're a heart-led leader, you're probably not. That heart-led leader is not a destination. It's, it's a journey. Yeah. Every day you got to work. And people think because I wrote the book, I am one. Oh, my Lord. I got so much work to do. Yeah. Heart-led leadership. That's what that book's about, really leading with love, really living a life where you put your customers, your clients, your employees, your family truly, authentically first. And what that does for results is astounding. Yeah. You do a lot of work with CEOs, leaders of all sorts. Um, a leader comes to you and says, Tommy, you know, I want to be a heart-led leader. What do I do? Where do I start? What would your advice to that leader be? Well, first of all, if someone does that, that's a beautiful thing because there's a guy that wants to, or a gal that wants to become a heartland leader. A lot of times I'm hired, it's the chairman of the company saying, we're a Fortune 100 company. My CEO is a narcissist, doesn't think he needs help or she needs help. Yeah. Can you come in? <laughs> that's, that's most of my invitation. Yes. Um, but what I do first is I just kind of do an audit, right? I kind of, Ask that CEO, how do you think your peers, your, you know, your direct reports, your, you know, your employees think of you? And they would tell me something. And then I would talk to, to the, his direct or her direct reports and her employees and I ask how they feel. And nine times out of 10, there's a disconnect there, right? That usually the leader thinks that they're here, but they're not really here. Yeah. So it's one is this recognition um, that, you know, you really got to work on your heart. Um, but it's such a beautiful place to be in that coaching world now because, um, you know, 100 years ago, you know, leading by fear, you know, command and control. This a leader knows all the answers. A leader's never wrong, right? You feared the leader. I mean, that was that was it. Yeah. All leaders. And in a sense, when I was talking about Blanton Belt before of people, he was that kind of leader. But leading an organization today, you will not go far at all. No. And there are leaders that still lead this way. No question. And you have to lead with humility and with love and authenticity and vulnerability. And, and you, and you got to coach that stuff. Um, one of the things I love about hockey, back to hockey, is it's not a sport that you got to kick people off teams. It's not a sport that you have to like tell someone you're not good enough to make the team. Like Anthony, when he graduated high school, he wanted to play D1 hockey. He's good. So he went to Canada. You play in this league called Juniors. He's the best, the best. Anthony played with him, got traded, played with him. And he knew. He calls me Tommy. He's my stepson. I'm good, but I'm not good enough to play D1. Mm. I know where my place is. I'm going to play club at West Point. Anthony, no, no, you're going to work hard. I'm, I want you, you can make D1. I'm trying to, Tommy, I know where I am. It's interesting. You, you just know they knew, they, they know when their the game's over, and I I I I wish there were more leaders like that. Yeah, that just knew I need to know, I need to learn this stuff. Yeah, I need a different leadership philosophy. This command and control, this fear, 
this manipulation is not working anymore. You know, Tommy, come in and, and program my heart. Teach me how to lead this way. And, I, and when you have that kind of client, it's just fun because they, they really want to grow and learn. But most of my clients are the ones that have broken marriages, broken organizations, and they need me to come in to heal. And usually when you have a broken family, you got a broken company, mm. right? Usually. And so trying to teach grown men and grown women how to love differently has been a challenge, but I really, I really love it. I'm really good at it. And I just love doing it because you can change companies. Yeah. You change someone's heart. You, you've just changed an organization and yet you change the family. Yeah. You change the marriage. It's really cool work.